sexy bitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's going on YouTube? Thank you all so much for clicking on this video. I'm sorry for the lack of videos I've been uh, doing recently, but um, if you're wondering what my thoughts are on the last WrestleMania and the NXT special, I enjoyed it. The best part about WrestleMania was the return of the Hardy Boys. I, wanted, I really wanted to do a review, but just didn't have the time. But I'll tell you what I do have time for. I have time for Iron Fist, Netflix show and a review. Here we go. Netflix has been kicking some, you know, some serious ass with all these Marvel shows. We've seen some really great stuff out of Marvel and Netflix. Many people, including myself, uh, have been saying that Marvel and the superhero genre in general needs to mix things up a bit. You know, kind of mix things up a little bit. You know, have a fresh start. All these movies, all these shows are starting to resemble one another. Marvel heard the criticism, criticism and decided to go in a different direction. Keep the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies a little light in tone while making their Netflix shows a little bit, you know, they were linked to the MCU, but just a little darker in tone. For example, in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy, you have Baby Groot, a trash-talking raccoon, and a duck-drinking martinis at the end credits. Netflix, on the other hand, they have drug dealers, mobsters, sex, violence, goons, and extreme vigilante with blood smeared on his face and a huge skull on his chest. Talk about diversity. For those who don't know or aren't as nerdy or geeky as I am, all these Marvel and Netflix shows have been leading up to a superhero group known as the Defenders. To keep it simple, the Defenders are like the Avengers of the Suburbs. The cast of heroes consist of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, The Punisher, Misty Knight, Claire Temple, Elektra, and Iron Fist. It has also been reported that Sigourney Weaver has also joined the cast as well. But Iron Fist is the last piece of the puzzle before we get to Defenders. What I personally enjoy about the MCU Netflix shows is how different they are, meaning they offer something new in the genre and they keep the genre fresh and there's something there for everyone. You know, for instance, if you want um, a beautiful badass chick uh, who's badass and tough and beautiful, you can watch Jessica Jones. Or if you want to see Urban Justice, you can check out Luke Cage. Every show feels like it has something new. Whether it be the R&B and hip hop soundtrack of Luke Cage or the dark tone of Daredevil. Iron Fist has been getting a lot of hate and it has been called the worst of the Marvel Netflix shows, but I watched all 13 episodes, all 13 hours of this series, and I enjoyed the Marvel you know, Cinematic Universe on Netflix, and I was really looking forward to what you know, Iron Fist was going to do. Honestly, I think I would have to agree that this is one of the weaker shows. That doesn't mean it's horrible, because it's not. It's just more of the same. We've seen, you know, these type of shows before. It's nothing new when it comes to these MCU Netflix shows. But for those of you who don't know, Danny Rand is Iron Fist. He was only 10 years old when he survived the plane crash that took the lives of his wealthy parents. He was rescued by warrior monks and grew up in Kung Lao, or Kung Lun, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, where he endured harsh conditions, but also trained to be a really tough warrior. Years later, Danny returns home to New York City, and he rightfully wants a place in his family's company, which is now run by his father's former business partner. For years, people thought Danny was dead. Now people think he is crazy, they don't believe that he really is Danny Rand. Danny hopes to gain the trust of his family, friends, and be a part of his parents' legacy, and destroy an organization known as The Hand, and all the people who threaten his loved ones. I do believe that this is the weakest of the MCU shows on Netflix. However, I think it deserves some more respect. Like anything, this show has some good things and some not so good things. In my opinion, this show doesn't feature all that much of Iron Fist, if you can believe that. This series mainly focuses on the family and the company, Rand Enterprises. 
This features the character Harold Meacham played by, um, let me look up this guy's name, uh, David Wenham. He was in 300 and Van Helsing. Uh, I never noticed this until now, but goddamn, does Wenham look exactly like the actor Dom Hall Gleason from Ex Machina? Like seriously, look at the picture. They look so much alike, don't they? I swear to God, David Wenham has a son he doesn't know about. But Harold is our protagonist. The actor works well with what he is given because he is a very good actor. Unfortunately, he isn't given that much to work with. His character is written more like a cool businessman rather than a supervillain. He doesn't become a really terrifying villain until the last episode when you know he's fighting Iron Fist on the roof on a rooftop. The show spends so much time on this company and Danny's friends and Harold's children, Ward and Joy. I understand that this is needed for character development. On the other hand, this show should have featured way more of Iron Fist, way more of our main character. People are suing the company. They are getting bad publicity, uh, daddy issues, and we just get so much time with this company. And the show has so many good ideas it touches upon, but keeps going back to this company. One of the bad organizations in the series, known as The Hand, uh, they never really come off as menacing, and it's mainly because we do not get any time with them. Another big thing I have to get off my chest is how this show feels very much like a superhero show you would see on the CW network, and a superhero show in the late 90s and early 2000s. We are in a time where we are seeing almost the evolution of superhero films, and people want a change. This show goes back to those very typical superhero shows we've seen in the past. For instance, shows like Smallville. From the first couple of episodes, you can even predict the ending of the series. Finn Jones does a decent job as our main hero, but my biggest problem is how the character is written. His character is written to tell us his story instead of showing us his story and character. Empty your mind. I like the relationship with the character Colin Wing, played by Jessica Henwick. I never noticed this either until now, but the actress Jessica Henwick looks very much like an Asian version of the Luke Rock girl and one of my biggest crushes, April Rose. Look at the picture. I swear to God, they look exactly alike. If that picture doesn't do it for you, check out the other one. It's like looking in a mirror. It's the Asian version of you, April. But a lot of people on this show remind me of other people. But Henwick as Colin is a cool character and has great chemistry with Iron Fist. I feel like the best scenes for both of them are when they're together. Like Colin plays a dojo master in New York and that relationship that she forms with Danny makes her honestly the best chemistry on screen. Uh, Rosario Dawson, one of my favorite actresses, uh, comes back as her character Claire Temple from Daredevil and Luke Cage. Dawson is always going to be one of my favorite actresses. However, her character here feels very much like she is just here to connect this to the other shows. Throughout the series, she is just mainly there to be the voice of reason, and I felt like she could have done so much more. In addition, the show honestly has episodes you can skip. You can skip certain episodes and you will still completely understand the plot. So a few episodes feel very much like filler episodes. Episode 6 is where things really, um, in a way they get moving. Speaking of episodes, Riza of the Wu-Tang Clan and the Man with the Iron Fist directs episode 6. And episode 6, in my opinion, is the best episode. That is when, that is the episode that feels the most like a comic book, the most like an Iron Fist comic book, and those old school, you know, kung fu flicks that you would see back in the day. You can tell Rizzo really does have a passion for this style. It shows in his music and him as a director. And if Marvel really wanted this show to be a game changer, they should have changed the fighting style, the action choreography, and the action and fighting feels very much like a low budget television show. And at times, you can even tell it's a stunt double. While watching this, I kept saying to myself, what if all these fight scenes were filmed like Gareth Evans' The Raid movies? That movie offered some of the best action and fighting scenes I've personally ever seen. 
I have seen, you know, in just filmmaking in general, it is ruthless and you can tell what is going on. And at times, it looks like it was all filmed in one take. That would have made the show tremendous in my opinion. Even with the so-so story, if the action was as good as the raid, people would love this movie, I'm mean, sorry, love this show a whole lot more. Also, the music for this show made me a little confused at times. Uh, at times they are playing like rap and hip-hop, pop and rock, and I couldn't tell what the tone of the series was trying to accomplish. And before, you know, before there was Richard Pryor and Wilder, before there was Woody and Wesley, before there was Murphy and Nolte, before there was Dre and Marshall, there was Power Man, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. In the comics, these guys are a team known as Power Man and Iron Fist, aka the Heroes for Hire. Earlier, I mentioned how Claire is used to connect the show to other shows. I believe this show would have been written where the first half, it could have been written where the first half is you know, Iron Fist in the origin, and then the second half is Heroes for Hire. That way you keep the popularity of Luke Cage going, and are establishing a not-so-popular superhero with Iron Fist. And you know, with great writing and great storytelling, anything is possible. I know I have said a lot of negative things throughout this review, but I do not want to end it on a sour note. It's not that this show is terrible, I just expect a lot more out of Marvel at this point. I like the cast, the cast works with what they are given, and like anything, the series could have used some improvement. Would I recommend it? Only if you're a huge fanboy or fangirl of Marvel. But that's all I can really say. I think the very low ratings, like the score on Rotten Tomatoes is a little harsh. I think the show deserves a little bit more respect. I give it respect for at least trying. They do have compelling characters and compelling stories, but at the end of it all, it's half and half for me. My biggest issue is how the show ended, the action sequences, and the writing. All of that being said, I believe season one of Marvel's Iron Fist on Netflix earns a 5 out of 10. I believe that's a fair rating. I think in The Defenders, Iron Fist will get some better treatment. So if you've seen the show, I'm interested in you know what you guys and gals think uh did you like it did you dislike it do you think it sucks uh feel free to say what's up and that's all i can really say about iron fist thank you all so much for watching this video and i hope you all have an amazing day as always thank you bye and if you would like to see my uh review of luke cage i'll leave it down in the description below that's